start. This video is going to be about the muscles that move at the elbow joint or move the elbow joint. And um, first I'm going to present what muscles we're going to see on this whiteboard. And then we're going to look at a typical upper limb muscle model that you'd see in an anatomy lab. So the elbow joint we know is a synovial joint. A synovial joint. So that means it has a synovial cavity with synovial membrane secreting synovial fluid. It's a compound joint, so it's got the humero ulnar joint, which is between the trochlea of the humerus, the trochlea of the humerus. and the trochlear notch of the ulna. The other part is the humero radial joint. And that's between the head of the radius, head of radius, and the capitulum used to be called the capitellum of the humerus. The elbow functions as a hinge joint, so it's uniaxial or monoaxial, and its actions are in the sagittal plane around a medial lateral axis. medial lateral axis. And you can, if you palpate your own epicondyles, the medial and lateral epicondyles of the humerus, you can think of this axis as passing through the epicondyles. So muscles that are anterior to this axis will be flexors. And muscles that are posterior to the axis will be extensors. So we're looking, we're going to name the flexors at the elbow and the extensors at the elbow. So now let's look at the muscle model. So like I said, this is a typical muscle model that you'd see in an undergraduate anatomy and physiology lab. And the first thing you always want to do when you look at a model is to first to get oriented. So obviously this is the hand. <laughs> Here's the scapula. And this is the cut end of the clavicle. This is an anterior view. So we know this is the anterior view of the hand and the anterior view of the scapula. I'm going to turn it over. This is the posterior view. So this is the dorsum or the posterior surface of the hand. And you can see, and there's some tape on here, probably trying to hold this deltoid on. I'm gonna pull the tape back. This is the spine of the scapula. And some of the paint has worn off of this model. But if you can see the spine of the scapula, that tells you you're looking at a posterior view. And then this is the medial border of the scapula. So I'm going to turn it back over so we're on the anterior surface. And like I said, we're going to talk about the el muscles that move the elbow. So if I put my fingers kind of like this, this represents the axis of the elbow joint. So the muscles that are in the anterior compartment of the arm are going to be flexors. So this is the biceps brachii. And if I take the deltoid off, we can see the two heads of the biceps brachii. This is the short head going to the corcoid process of the scapula. And this is the long head going to the supraglenoid tubercle of the, of the scapula. The two heads come together to form the belly, and then the biceps attaches distally 
to the radial tuberosity. So this is a flexor at the elbow joint. It's innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. Now if I take the biceps brachii <laughs> off, and look, it's labeled there, deep to the biceps brachii is the brachialis. It goes from the humerus to the ulna. The humerus to the ulna. Sorry about that. Just well, ignore my mean? dog. It's okay. From the humerus to the ulna. So this is an elbow flexor. It's in the anterior compartment. It's innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. And in fact, this is the musculocutaneous nerve shown right here in yellow or, you know, faded yellow. So those two muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm are elbow flexors, biceps brachii, and you have to use the full name. You can't just say biceps like we do when we're exercising. And then deep to it, the brachialis. Now, even if I don't remove the biceps brachii, we can see the brachialis here. There's the brachialis. And from the other side, there's the brachialis. So the biceps brachii does not have to be removed in order to see the brachialis. Now there's another elbow flexor that's in the extensor compartment of the forearm. So I'm rotating the model so we see the posterior surface of the forearm. And this muscle here, that is the brachioradialis. The brachioradialis. So it is located in the posterior compartment of the forearm, attaches to the humerus laterally, and then goes all the way to the distal radius. So it doesn't act at the wrist, it acts at the elbow, and it's an elbow flexor. It's innervated by the radial nerve. Okay, so to review the elbow flexors, biceps brachii, brachialis, and brachioradialis. So if I put the, the arm model so that we're now looking at the posterior surface, this is the brachialis, this is the biceps brachii, and this is the brachioradialis. So the arm could be positioned like this and still be um, labeling the flexors at the elbow. Okay, now let's look at the extensors at the elbow. Really simple. Here's the triceps brachii. Triceps brachii means three-headed muscle of the arm, so it has three heads. This is its long head. It attaches to the scapula. This is the lateral head, attaches to the humerus. And then the medial head is right here. This is the medial head, and it attaches to the humerus, but notice how it's deep to the long head, and it's also deep to the lateral head. All three heads come together, and here's the tendon of the triceps, and it attaches to the olecranon process of the ulna. Notice this extensive tendon. So if you're looking at your own triceps contracting to do elbow extension, you will see the two bulks um, of the long and lateral heads, but then there'll be this flat area, and that flatness is because that's the tendon. There are no muscle fibers there. So the triceps is an elbow extensor. There's another elbow extensor. It's very small, and in fact... Here it is. Yeah. It's in the posterior compartment of the forearm, 
And this is called the Anconius. The Anconius. Very small um, muscle. You, your, under, your undergraduate anatomy teacher may not require you to learn it. And if you're in a professional program, you know, sometimes this is accidentally forgotten. All right, so that was a brief video showing the elbow flexors and the elbow extensors. Um, I hope that's useful. Thank you.